بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى جميع إخوانه من النبيين والمرسلين وآل كل وصحب كل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين all praise is due to Allah and may Allah raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and protect his nation from that which he fears for them. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to increase our knowledge and benefit us with the knowledge we have acquired. Ameen. I would like to remind you first to have the right intention in your hearts to attend this lesson for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also to put the intention of Atikaf in the mosque as long as you are in it. Lillahi ta'ala. As you may be aware of, this night could be the first night of Rabi'ul Awwal. The month wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. It's a blessed month. Muslims around the world commemorate the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during this month. Some already started, some will take the whole month to commemorate his honorable birth, and some may do it for a week. They decorate the streets, they offer food for free to the poor and needy, they make donations, all around the world they do this. So the whole nation as a whole agreed on this matter as being a recommended matter. And this was done for hundreds of years. It's been done for hundreds of years. No one objected to commemorating the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except for a guy called Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab who emerged about 250 years ago. He objected to this matter and he objected to making salah on the Prophet after the Azan and other matters as well. But Muslims before him were living peacefully, commemorating the birth of the Prophet peacefully. Until this person came, unfortunately, and he started opposing and he poisoned many minds of people. Also, during the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, it's the habit of many Muslims around the world that they read something about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They might talk about Ash-Shama'il, the traits and description of the Prophet, the book of Al Shama'il, authored by Imam al Tirmizi, is a very nice book. Also, other books as well. We chose this year, inshallah, to read in a very valuable book as well, authored by Al Hafiz al Nawawi, who died in the year 676 after the prophetic immigration. He authored a book called Tahzeeb al Asma wal Lugat, and he made one whole chapter about the lineage of the Prophet, his traits, his miracles, the battles he participated in, and uh, some of the special rules pertaining to the Prophet. There are some rules that are special to the Prophet and they do not apply to us. So he talked about this and inshallah Azza wa Jal to make the benefit, a wide benefit to all inshallah Azza wa Jal will explain that book that he authored about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a series of lessons during the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. First he talked about the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, so I'll be 
saying in English the translation of what he wrote in Arabic. And these are the words of Imam al-Nawawi, as we mentioned in his book, Tahzeeb al-Asma' wal-Lughat. He said the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the son of Abdullah, who is the son of Abdul Muttalib, who is the son of Hashem, who is the son of Abdul Manaf, who is the son of Qusay, who is the son of Kilab. Kilab is one of the ancestors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that name Kilab is not a humiliating name for him. He was called this, as it was mentioned, because he used to hunt using dogs. See how they use dogs now for hunting. So he used to do this. And the Arabs uh, did not find any problem naming sometimes people after the names of some animals. That was common amongst the Arabs and they didn't classify as a humiliating. Kilab is the son of Murrah, Murrah is the son of Kaab, who is the son of Lu'ay, who is the son of Ghalib, who is the son of Fahr, who is the son of Malik, who is the son of An-Nadr, who is the son of Kinana, who is the son of Khuzayma, who is the son of Mudrika, who is the son of Ilyas, who is the son of Mudar, who is the son of Nizar, who is the son of Ma'ad, who is the son of Adnan. Now up to here, Adnan, that lineage from the Prophet to Adnan, that's his great, great ancestor, up to here, all the scholars agreed on it. Now, from Adnan till Adam, yeah, there are great differences amongst the scholars about the names and the number of ancestors from Adnan to Adam alayhi salam. But they all agreed as well that the Prophet's lineage will go back to Ismail, the son of Ibrahim. So Ismail alayhi salam was the son of Ibrahim. From his lineage, from his descendants, the descendants of Ismail, only one Prophet came, and that is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know Ibrahim alayhi salam had Ismail and Ishaq, yani Ishmael and Isaac. Now from Ishmael, Ismail, only Prophet Muhammad came. From Isaac came Yaqub, Jacob. Jacob is called Israel as well. That's another name for him. And from uh, Jacob came all the children of Israel. And many prophets came amongst the children of Israel and the last of them was Prophet Isa alayhi salam. So from that lineage as you can see from that lineage all the prophets came from the children of Israel but from the lineage of Prophet Ismail alayhi salam only one came and that is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the lineage of the Prophet will go back to Ismail, the son of Ibrahim. From Ibrahim to Adam also there are differences. From Adnan to Ismail there are differences as well. What the scholars agreed on without disagreement is up to what we mentioned, to Adnan. From the Prophet till Adnan. Now we'll talk about the names of the prophets. So I would recommend if you have, you can bring with you pen and paper, you can write down some notes because they are very important. And if you miss out for tonight, you can always go back to this lesson on YouTube and Facebook and write down some notes and teach them to your children as well about the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because it's sad sometimes when you ask your children about the names of the children of the Prophet, they don't know about them, but they know about all the football players. You know that. That's a fact, unfortunately. So we'll talk about the names of the Prophet and also the agnomen, 
Agnaman meaning alternative names for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alternative names for the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. There are some confirmed names for the Prophet mentioned in the Qur'an and the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. However, all the added ones, they call them names metaphorically, but they are actually description and attributes for the Prophet. So you may hear about a name, it's not actually a name for him, it's a description for him. Description for him, and he became known by this. Like when you say, for instance, a Shafi'ah. Al-Shafi'ah, Al-Mushaffa'ah. Yes, they put this amongst the names. But Al-Shafi'ah is actually a description for the Prophet that the one who will intercede for the believers on the day of judgment. And Al-Mushaffa'ah, the one whose intercession will be granted on the day of judgment. So that's a description for the Prophet. But they may include them amongst the names. And that's why you will see now, as we mention, what Nawawi mentioned, that the names of the Prophet, according to some, reached about a thousand. Yeah, but they added descriptions amongst the names, metaphorically. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has an agnomen, meaning the famous agnomen, meaning he was called after something, and that famous Agnaman is that he was called after his eldest son and the Prophet was called Abu Al-Qasim it means the father of Al-Qasim the father of Al-Qasim now even in many countries in the Arab world yeah they call people by their alternative name in slang you may say nickname but here the proper use of the term is agnomen, the alternative name. They call that person after his eldest son, Abu Fulan, Abu Fulan, Abu Fulan. That's the habit. So the Prophet was known as what? Abu Al-Qasim, the father of Al-Qasim, and that's his eldest son. Jibreel alayhi salam gave him another alternative name and called him Abu Ibrahim. Abu Ibrahim, because he had as well Another son called Ibrahim, we'll talk about them. He had Al-Qasim, he had Abdullah, and he had Ibrahim. So Jibreel alayhi salam called the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abu Ibrahim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has many names. Ibn Asakir, the well-known scholar, made one chapter in his book, The History of Damascus, about the names of the Prophet Imagine one chapter in that book, The History of Damascus, about the names of the Prophet Some of these names were mentioned in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And others were mentioned in other than these two uh, books. Amongst the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Muhammad. That's his best name, Muhammad. And Ahmad. Muhammad means the one who is praised a lot. Due to his praised traits. You know, when we talk about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we talk about his character, we talk about his uh, beauty, we talk about his generosity, we talk about his compassion, we talk about all these traits of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know the poets wrote many poems praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he is praised a lot. He's praised by Allah, he's praised by the angels, he is praised by the previous nations, by the prophets of the previous nations. He is praised by this nation. So the one who is the most praised amongst the creations is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
And that's the meaning of this name Muhammad. The one who is praised a lot, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever we are talking about his life and we're mentioning his names, it's highly recommended that as long as you are in this session, you make salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, his name is Ahmad, the one who praises a lot. He praises Allah a lot. So the one who praises a lot is Ahmad. It was mentioned as well that on the day for judgment, as you know, when the sun will be very close from the heads of people, people will be in that hard situation and that calamity. I'm talking about the believers and they want a relief from this, except for those who will be in the shade of the arsh like the prophets, righteous, and some types of people will be in the shade of the arsh. They won't be harmed by the heat of the sun. But those who are exposed from the sinners, they want a relief. They go to Prophet Adam alayhi salam, asking him to ask Allah azza wa jal, so they can be relieved from this. He says to them, I'm not the one for this kind of intercession. He directs them to go to Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. They go to Prophet Nuh. He says the same, I'm not the one for it. He directs them to go to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says the same. He directs them to Moses alayhi salam. He says the same. He directs them to Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. He says the same. Then he directs them to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. That's when the Prophet prostrates to Allah Azza wa Jal, makes sujood. He says, when I make that prostration on the Day for Judgment, Allah will inspire me with praises that no one had ever praised Allah with such praises. So he keeps on praising Allah, making dua, until it will be said to the Prophet, Raise your head, ask for whatever you want and you will be given your request and intercede for them and you will be granted that intercession. And then they will be relieved by the greatest intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. So Muhammad, the one who is praised a lot, Ahmad, the one who praises Allah a lot and Al-Hashir, Al-Hashir also is amongst his names. There is a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Li khamsatu asma, I have five names. Ana Muhammad, wa Ahmad, wa Al-Hashir, wa Al-Aqib, wa Al-Mahi. So he mentioned these five names in this hadith. Al-Hashir meaning the one after whom People will be resurrected, meaning there is no prophet between Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and resurrection. Meaning he's the last prophet. After him will come resurrection when people die, then they will be resurrected. So they will be resurrected after the prophet. Uh, that's the meaning of al-hashr. They will be resurrected, assembled. Al-hashr is assembly. They will be assembled, resurrected and assembled after the Prophet because there is no Prophet after him. Some said Al-Hashr means the one after whom people will be assembled. This is because the first one to come out of his grave is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all people will follow. So they will be assembled after him. That's the meaning of Al-Hashr according to some scholars. Also he is Al-Aqib. Al-Aqib is one of the names of the Prophet. Al-Aqib linguistically means the last. And it means here that there is no Prophet after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is the seal of Prophets. There is no Prophet after him. That's why that misguided person 
the lawyer called Ghulam Ahmad Al Qadiani. They call him Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, who died about 100 years ago and has followers up to now. They call him Qadianis or Ahmadis. He emerged from India on the border between India and Pakistan from Qadian. That's why they call him Qadiani. This person a hundred years ago claimed that he is a prophet and claimed that he is Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And he died. And the Prophet in many a hadith mentioned about what happens when Isa alayhi salam descends to earth. The tranquility, the peace that will be spread and all the non-believers will die on earth. Only the believers will be on earth. So look, he died with the rest of the non-believers who died from that time. So he was a liar. Up to now they have followers. They call him Ahmadis or Qadianis. Also the Prophet is Al-Muqaffi. Al-Muqaffi meaning the follower of the Prophets alayhim as salatu was salam because he is the last of them. He followed them. Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, Allah, the prophets are the ones whom Allah guided. Follow their guidance. So Al Muqaffi, the follower of the prophets. Al Mahi. Literally, it means the eraser. And it means he are the one who erased blasphemy. And that means most of it. Because as you know, blasphemy did not vanish on earth totally. But the Prophet والسلام, eliminated blasphemy to a great extent. That's why he's called Al-Mahi. So it means by the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kufr and shirk will diminish gradually until will it's completed by the descent of Prophet Isa alayhi salam when all the non-believers on earth will die. That's why the Prophet is called Al-Mahi. Also Khatamul Anbiya, the seal of the Prophets, and Nabiyur Rahma. See, like this is Nabiyur Rahma, the Prophet of Mercy. Also Nabiyul Malhama. Al-Malhama means the war. And that means the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very keen to defend Islam. And he urged Muslims to defend Islam. And Allah Azza wa Jal granted him and the companions who were with him victory in all the battles he participated in. Although in most of these battles, the number of Muslims was way less than the number of the non-believers. But Allah Azza wa Jalla granted them victory. Also he is, in other narrations, Nabiyul Malahim. Malahim means wars, like plural. Also he is Nabiyul Tawbah. Now the scholars said the meaning of Nabiyul Tawbah, and it literally it means the prophet of repentance. It doesn't mean that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to repent a lot because he used to commit sins a lot. No, Hasha. Rather, he was called Nabiyu Tawbah, the Prophet of Repentance, meaning he's the one who guided people, who guided people to repent to Allah with the conditions. So, because he ordered people to repent, he was called the prophet of repentance. 
Allah mentioned in the Quran that Allah protected him from sinning before and after. Also amongst his names is Al-Fatih and Taha. Taha is also a name of the Prophet. As we mentioned as a description, it means pure or the guide, yeah, the prophet of guidance, or a great man. So Taha meaning great man. Allah said in the Quran, Taha ma anzalna alayka al Quran li tashqa addressed him with these two letters. Taha. So some said Taha is in reference to a word that means O oh, great man. And he was addressed with it. So that was amongst his names as well. Also Yasin. You know as well, that's uh, a name and it means O oh, master, Yasin. Or some said O oh, perfect uh, man. O oh, perfect man. So Ya yeah, Insan. Yani ya insan, ya seen ya insan, but a perfect man. Also Abdullah, that's amongst the names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah. And that's the best description for the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, to be called Abdullah. In the Quran, Allah did not call any of the Prophets with that description as Abdullah except for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the best description for him to be the slave of Allah. It was mentioned that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended to the skies, you know, he reached Sidrat al-Muntaha and he received revelation there. He was asked to wish something and his wish will be fulfilled. He didn't wish for increase of his money. He didn't wish for increase of his children or any of that. Rather, he said, O oh Allah, I want to be called as your slave. Then Allah revealed this verse to the Prophet, Subhanallazi asra Layla. Allah called him the slave of Allah. In another verse, وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ يَدْعُوهُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ So Abdullah here is in reference to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that was the best description for him alayhi salatu wa sallam. Also, Imam al-Bayhaqi mentioned that some scholars added to the names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying, Allah called him in the Quran, Rasul, a messenger. Allah called him Nabi, a prophet. Allah called him Ummi, Ummi. And Ummi means the one who doesn't write and read. Now for other than the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, that's a what? A deficiency. When one is unable to read and write. But when we say this about the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, that's not a dispraise. Because that was a miracle for him. Because all what he taught them about from the previous nations and what's going to happen later until the day for judgment, and all the knowledge that he had and they realized without him reading one book from the books that were at that time or the previous books that shows that he is the messenger of Allah. So that supports his claim. So for him that's a praise. For other than him it's a dispraise. Now if one doesn't know how to read and write that's a dispraise. But for the Prophet it was a praise to support his claim that he is the messenger and prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also shahid, witness. So he was called shahid. 
Allah said, Inna arsalna kashahidan wa mubashiran wa nazira. Shahid. Shahid witness. Shahid for what? On the day for judgment, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will testify on the day of judgment that the prophets did what Allah ordered them to do in conveying their message to their people and that those who refused to follow the message and chose to oppose the prophets were misguided. The prophet will witness on the day of judgment that the prophets did what Allah Azza wa Jal ordered them to do. Also he will witness for this nation as well. Also he is Al-Mubashir. Al-Mubashir. Al-Mubashir, the one who gives the good news, the good tidings to the believers that they will be in paradise. In this life, how many people the Prophet ﷺ gave them the good news. So he gave to the people who were at his time, they met him, they sat with him, he gave good news to many of them that they will be in paradise. And he, peace be upon him also, gave this kind of good tiding to the people of his nation when, for instance, Someone sees the Prophet والسلام, in a dream. The Prophet والسلام, said, Whoever sees me in a dream has truly seen me. For the devil cannot uh, come in my shape. And in another narration, the Prophet والسلام, said, Whoever sees me in a dream will definitely sees me while awake. And the scholar said, while one is in his deathbed, if he saw the Prophet in his dream in this life, while he is in his deathbed, it doesn't matter how far the distance is from his uh, place to Medina, where the Prophet is buried, that distance will be as transparent as looking through a glass. So it's like you're looking from here to outside through that glass. He will see the Prophet in his grave, the Prophet will smile at him and will give him the good news that he will be in paradise. So that's for this nation. Also the Prophet والسلام, is an nazir, the one who warned the non-believers and the sinners. Also a da'i ilallah wa da'iyan ilallah. So he calls people to the past of the religion of Allah. Wasirajan Munira. Also Wasirajan Munira. So he's the one with his light of guidance, with the light of guidance that he brought to people, the darkness of shirk and blasphemy diminished. It's like when there is darkness in a house, and they bring a siraj. Siraj is like a lantern. Lantern. And they ignite it. And that darkness will diminish in that room. Because of the light of this lantern. So what happens? As he mentioned. So what the scholars mentioned. The Prophet والسلام, The light of his guidance. Illuminated the hearts of many people as people will be able to see in front of them when they light up a lantern. So the Prophet lighted up their hearts with what? With the light of Iman. With the light of Iman. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Al-Munir. Al-Munir, meaning the one who guides people to the straight path with clear evidence, with the clear evidence and the proofs that are very explicit and strong. 
So that's the meaning of Al-Munir. Also, his name is Al-Ra'uf, Al-Rahim. Allah Ta'ala mentioned about the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam the following, Bil Mu'minina Ra'uf Al-Rahim. For the believers, he is what? He is compassionate and merciful. So Al-Ra'uf, compassionate, Rahim, merciful, also these are amongst the names of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. Wa muzakkira, a reminder. Also, rahma, mercy. Rahma, ni'ma, endowment. And al-hadi as well. He guides people to the straight path. So, all these are amongst the names of the Prophet. Ibn Abbas. رضي الله عنه narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said so we are quoting what Imam Nawawi said now some of these ahadith could have weakness in the chain of narrators but we are reading what he mentioned that's why we make it clear for you that if you hear something now, that's what he said, and we'll clarify it to you, insha'Allah, that this hadith is not strong, and this hadith should not be relied upon to confirm that name that we will mention here. Ibn Abbas, as he's quoting, that he said that the Prophet said, my name in the Quran is Muhammad, in the Injil is Ahmad, and in the Torah is Uhaid, Uhaid, or Ahid, either that way or that way, Uhaid or Ahid. And he continues by saying, I was called Uhaid because I keep my nation away from the fire of hell. But this name, as we mentioned, Uhaid, is not authenticated to be amongst his names because there is a weakness in the chain of narrators of this hadith. So don't rely on it, but we are reading what he mentioned. Also, he said in Nawawi, some of these names are not actually names but rather they are descriptions for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he said that Al-Hafiz Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi al-Maliki, when explaining the Sunan of At-Tirmizi, he said that some Sufis said, Allah Azza wa Jal has a thousand names, and also Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has a thousand names as well. But as we mentioned, these are not true names, rather they are descriptions for the Prophet ﷺ. Then he said, Ibn al-A'rabi said, as for the names of Allah to be counted as only a thousand, this is so little. He said, and as for the names of the Prophet ﷺ, I could not find a way to give an exact number for the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I counted 64 names for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, and he has more names as well. Now, if you were to add to the names that were mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, the descriptions, yeah, you will have more. And the more names, as you know, that uh, entails more greatness. To have more names, yet yeah, more greatness. Then he said, the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Amina bint Wahab, the daughter of Wahab. Wahab is the son of Abdul Manaf. Abdul Manaf is the son of Zuhra. Who is the son of Kilab, who is the son of Murra, who is the son of Kaab, who is the son of Lu'ay, who is the son of Ghalib. Yani her lineage 
the mother of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam will meet with the lineage of his father. The birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam was born on a year known as the year of the elephant. Some said after 30 years of that year, but that's a weak saying. Al-Hakim, that's the great Al-Hakim, said it was said after him by 40 years, it was said after that incident by 40 years or 10 years, but the famous and reliable saying is that he was born on that exact year. When Abraha, Abraha, the king of Abyssinia, came to destroy the Kaaba, and he brought the elephants with him, and he reached the borders of Mecca, and he was intending to head towards destroying the Kaaba, and the elephants did not obey them. Whenever he would direct the elephants towards Kaaba, they would sit. He would direct them to the direction where they came from, they would run. To the right, left, they would run. To the Kaaba, they would sit. Then Allah sent the birds, Al-Ababil. You know the story with the stones with them and his army was destroyed. And Allah protected the Kaaba. That was called the year of the elephant. On that same year, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born. And also they agreed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born on Monday during the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal. Monday and the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal, that's confirmed. However, what day during Rabi'u al-Awwal he said, some said on the second, some said on the eighth, some said on the tenth, and some said on the twelfth of Rabi'u al-Awwal. These are four famous sayings. But what is confirmed is Monday and during the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal. The death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam died in the morning of Monday on the 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal as well. On the 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal in the 11th year after the prophetic immigration. You know, later on when they started the Islamic calendar, they said we classify the first year when the Prophet immigrated from Mecca to Medina. So they started from there, from the month of Al-Muharram. In the 11th year, from the prophetic immigration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. So he was given the revelation or received the revelation at the age of 40, stayed for 13 years in Mecca, went to Medina for 10 years. On the 11th year, he passed away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was buried either on Tuesday after uh, noon time. Also, it was said the night of Wednesday, during the night of Wednesday. So either during the day of Tuesday or the night of Wednesday, meaning after the sunset on the day of Tuesday. That will start the night of Wednesday. Islamically, always we count the night before the day. So when we say the night of Wednesday, meaning Tuesday after sunset. So either during the day of Tuesday or after the sunset of that day. The Prophet ﷺ died at the age of 63, and that's the most reliable saying. Also, it was mentioned 65, you may hear all 60, but the reliable and authentic saying is 63. Some scholars said that those who said 60, they ignored 
the fraction after that. Because the Arabs sometimes, yeah, instead of saying 63, they would say 60. And they ignore these numbers after that. So they say 60. And that's why they said he died at the age of 60. They don't want to mention the three after 60. They would say 60. And those who said 65, they said the year he was born and the year he was died in. This is how they make it, 65. But the reliable saying is that to say 63. The Prophet died at the age of 63, and also that was the age of Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, when he died. Also the age of Umar, radiallahu anhu, when he died. Also the age of Ali, radiallahu anhu, when he died. And the age of Aisha, radiallahu anha, when she died. They all died at the age of 63. Also, this great Al-Hakim, who is the Shaykh of Al-Hakim, that you know, the author of Al-Mustadrak, said, it was said the Prophet wasallam was born on Monday. He received the revelation on Monday. He immigrated from Mecca to Medina on Monday. He entered Al-Medina on Monday and he died on Monday. So you won't forget that day. On Monday. That's why when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast Mondays and he was asked about his keenness to fast that day, he said, this is the day I was born. So what does that mean? You say to those who say to you, did the Prophet commemorate his birth? Actually he did. In this way, on the day he was born, meaning because he was born on Monday, to show his thankfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal for sending him as the best of all the creations, he fasted that day. So he offered an act of obedience on that day, which is to fast. So the scholars said, we take from this proof that on the day of the birth of the Prophet, we can offer acts of worship on that day by giving donations to the poor, praising Allah, and so on, making salah on the Prophet, acts of worship. We can do on that day to express our thankfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal for being from the nation of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because brothers and sisters, Maybe you are unaware of this, but that's a great merit for you. Honestly, a great merit for you to be amongst the nation of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those followers of the previous nations would love to be amongst the nation of Prophet Muhammad Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Isn't it sufficient for you to think about that this nation has become the best of all nations because of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This nation will be the first nation to be resurrected before other nations. The first nation to enter paradise before other nations. All that because of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And those ignorant people with blackened hearts they say to you, don't commemorate the birth of the Prophet, bid'ah. I want to show my love to the Prophet. I want to express my thankfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal for this great endowment. The Prophet that will be granted the great intercession on the day for judgment. The Prophet that will be standing next to as sirat the bridge. And whenever his nation, people of his nation are crossing that bridge, he will be asked, Oh Allah, Sallim, Sallim, meaning save them, save them. And he prostrates on that day and he says, Oh Allah, my nation, my nation. If he is so compassionate to that extent, so worried about his nation to that extent, and he intercedes for his nation as well in this way, how can we not show our love to the Prophet Also it was narrated that the Prophet was born 
with the umbilical cord already cut. And that's something special for him. Also, he was born circumcised. And not only Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in that way, others as well, it was mentioned, were born in that way. But also, uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam was born circumcised already. And he was wrapped when he died with three pieces of garment. Uh, three articles of clothing, like sheets, like he was wrapped with a three, and they are all white. And without something to cover his head, or something to cover the top, special. Rather, he was wrapped with a sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that was mentioned in as sahihain as well, al-Bukhari and Muslim. Also, Al-Hakim mentioned that when the Prophet ﷺ was placed in the kafan, the shroud, when they shrouded him with the kafan, they put him on his bed that he used to sleep on next to the grave that they dug for him. Because what happened when the Prophet ﷺ died, as we mentioned on Monday, people were in shock. They haven't experienced this experience before. And they didn't know what to do. They even started talking about where to bury him. What to do for him and where to bury him. Until Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came to them. Because he was so close to the Prophet. He said to them and he relieved them. He said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Prophets must be buried where they die. So in the place they die, they should be buried there. So they moved the bed. They dug the grave. That's in the chamber of Lady Aisha radiallahu anha because that's where he died. They moved the bed. They dug the grave. And they washed him and they shrouded him, as we mentioned, three articles of clothing. Then people started going one by one, group by group, praying the funeral prayer for the Prophet ﷺ without being led by an imam. And that's for a wisdom. Imam al-Shafi'i mentioned in his book Al-Um that this was for a wisdom for the greatness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also to show that no one is more entitled than the other to pray the funeral prayer for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're all the same. So that's why they weren't led by an Imam one by one. They prayed the funeral prayer for him. The first one to pray the funeral prayer was Al-Abbas the uncle of the Prophet, then the clan of Hashem, then the immigrants, then the Ansar supporters, then the rest of the people. Then after men finished, children went in and prayed the funeral prayer for him, then the ladies. And he was buried there, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who went down to his grave were Al-Abbas, his uncle, Ali, his cousin, Al-Fadl wa Qusam, and these two were the sons of Al-Abbas as well, and Shukran. And also it was mentioned that Usama ibn Zayd and Aus ibn Khawli were amongst them as well. Those who placed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They put him in the Lahad. Al-Lahad, now if you go to Medina and you watch how they bury people, they bury people in Al-Lahad. They dig the grave, it's different from what you see here. They dig the grave like L shape. The L shape. And that part will be towards the Qibla. So they dig down, then they make a cavity in the direction of the Qibla, enough to fit the dead person. So they put him inside, then they put some bricks here to cover it, then they put this soil here to cover it. 
Did you get uh, what I'm trying to say? This, this is called lahad. That's one way. They do it when the uh, ground is a bit solid. But when it is soft, they do what is called shak. So they dig all the way down. Then they build around it. They put him, then they put like uh, slabs. Then they put the soil on top. This is called a shak. A shak and a lahad. The Prophet والسلام, was placed in a lahad. And also they put the bricks. And it was mentioned there were about nine. Nine bricks to cover it. Then they put the soil to cover this whole grave. And his grave was made flat with a bit of like a hump. With a bit of a hump, not completely flat, but with a bit of like a hump, as you can see it now. This is how they saw the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, like this. And they also put water on the grave of the Prophet Insha'Allah Ta'ala will stop up to here. We'll keep you, insha'Allah, uh, excited for next lesson. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, like looking forward to continue about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as mentioned by Imam Al-Nawawi, Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. We say La ilaha illallah and make salah on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.